fucking shit. All right, I'm going to play it. Independent, non-voters, what cost would it cost us? Well, I think it would be catastrophic for the economy and for individual families. Catastrophic. Look at the chart on the screen. Those great all-time highs that we've been used to for the last, let's say, uh, three years. We're making lower lows. Lower lows, not higher highs. Reality's about to set in, and it's going to be a scary reality. It's going to be very fucking scary for a lot of us. But let me let them finish. Nearly 50 million seniors could stop receiving Social Security payments or see them delayed. Our troops would not know when they would get their next paycheck. Social Security is pretty much over. The troops won't be getting paid. What are they fighting for? If the Constitution doesn't mean shit, what are the troops fighting for? Now, I personally believe the Constitution still has rule over this nation, but there's bigger fish that don't believe that. So what exactly would the soldiers be fighting for? It makes you think, doesn't it? Let's let her finish. We have 30 million families who rely on the monthly child tax credit, and they would not receive that relief at least on time. And as we saw in 2011, when the debt ceiling um, came, was raised minute and investor and consumer confidence was shaken in the run-up. Um, we saw a marked increase in interest rates, a marked drop in the stock market. And when US interest rates go up in the credit rating of the United States was downgraded. That means higher interest payments for everyone who has a loan, whether it's a small business. Now understand, understand. Right now, interest rates are at its all time low. All time low. People are getting home loans for 2.5% interest rates. She's saying that they're going to have to increase this. They're going to have to increase this. If you're barely getting by now, when this happens, you're going to be fucked. And now they want the same woman, Janet Yellen, they want the IRS to be able to look at your bank accounts when you make transactions over $600. Now, as of now, it's $10,000. But when you pay your rent, your mortgage, you pay your bills, shit is over $600, they're going to be in your business. They're going to be watching what you spend your money on how you spend your money. They're, they're going to read your habits. They're the mafia. They're the mafia. We're not even talking about the, the, the tax for driving your vehicle now that, that, that they want to uh, implement. We'll play a, a couple more minutes of this. Let me play a couple more minutes. Because this is important shit. The fuck shit you want to hear, I get it, I understand, but this shit right here is very fucking important. This shit is your kids eating. This shit is real, dude. It's real. A homeowner with a mortgage, uh, a credit card payment, um, anyone who borrows would see a higher interest costs of their debt. We must raise the debt ceiling for the benefit of the American people. I don't care what party they're from. Let me go to uh, Chairman Powell. Now, the Fed is rightfully focused on controlling inflation while boosting employment with the aim of guiding our economy back to its pre-pandemic normal. 
And at the European Central Forum, you mentioned that it's urgent for the Fed to resolve the tension between these two policy goals since taming prices by, rise, by raising interest rates would weaken our labor market. As the Fed considers its monetary policy, how will you manage the trade-offs uh, between controlling prices and ensuring full employment? And how do you plan to resolve the tension? He can't. He can't do shit about it. There's nothing Jerome Powell can do. You understand? Like, like the lady just said, when this happens, interest rates are going to spike. When interest rates spike, unemployment is going to spike. We're, we're used in the last year and a half of getting this free money even though none's free. We're used in this last year and a half of not working, of being as lazy as we can be while China's ramping shit up. We're used to it now. You see, all this goddamn COVID talk, and I don't give a damn, I don't give a fuck. I'm going to say the word. I know a lot of YouTube, YouTubers do, oh, the C word. No, fucking COVID. A lot of this COVID talk it's getting your mind off of the real big issue. Yeah, COVID's a big issue. Should you get your shot? Should you not get the shot? Who knows? Who gives a fuck at this point in time? Right now, we're talking about your livelihoods. Your children's future. Their present being destroyed. The debt ceiling for the last... Since 1971, I believe, the debt ceiling has been raised... To uncontrollable numbers. Nothing is going to help this. But. The beginning of the fourth industrial revolution. People don't want to say it now. But the great reset is happening. It's happening. Rather you fucking like it or not. It's fucking happening. Everything will be digi digitalized, tokenized, up for sale at any given point in time. I have a mortgage. My mortgage has transferred uh, uh, from this company to that company to that company to that company. Not because of anything I did, just because they sell these contracts. They sell your, your mortgage loan. To the next bank, to the next bank, to the next bank. That's the name of the game. That process probably takes months. Once you digitalize everything and tokenize everything on blockchain, it's going to take seconds. This is where we're headed. I've, I've put it out there before. No one seems to give a fuck. No one seems to want to prepare themselves for what's going to happen. It's going to happen. October 18th is the date. If they don't raise this debt ceiling, we're fucked for a little bit. Get your Vaseline. Get your two fingers like this. Put it around your goddamn asshole and fuck yourself because that's what's about to happen. What I'm going to put on the screen, it, 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 or screen is Jamie Dimon from J.P. Morgan. Google J.P. Morgan and Jamie Dimon. Google both of them. So, you know the importance of what he's saying. Jamie Dimon says J.P. Morgan has begun the prepare for potential U.S. default. What are you doing? Are you preparing? Are you preparing? It's this fucking J.P. Morgan we're talking about here. So now you see why I'm so confident in saying that this is going to happen. Now you know why I'm so confident in saying that this is going to happen. Jamie Dimon's preparing. Let me put it on the screen for you.
It's crazy. It's crazy. No one gives a fuck, huh? I'm telling you, all the dumb shit people hear and this real shit, no one, no one gives a fuck about. U.S. US default. default. No one gives a fuck about it. But watch Jamie Diamond, uh, Jamie Diamond talk about the U.S. default and how J.P. Morgan is preparing for it. Break down your report for us. What happens if the U.S. defaults? Yeah, that's right, Anna. It would be, of course, unprecedented. Uh, global investors uh, believe, uh, and with good reason, because from the, from the beginning of the, the nation, we've been paying our debt uh, on time. They get their principal, they get their interest on time. So they feel like this debt is risk-free. It's the, the benchmark for, uh, uh, for the entire world. And if uh, that's shaken, if that confidence is shaken, if they don't get paid on time, even briefly, uh, that uh, means that they're going to demand a much higher interest rate to compensate for that risk. And that that uh, is cataclysmic uh, for the entire financial system. So every everything is, is based on that premise that they're going to get paid back if they don't, then stock prices decline, uh, mortgage rates rise, uh, it's going to be difficult for businesses to Look at that screen. Impact of U.S. default. Moody's Analytics. Why about 6 million jobs just like that? Unemployment goes up to about 9%. We know that they're being, <laughs> they're being very uh, light on that number. Very light. For something that's never happened to this country, and you, for you to say that unemployment's only going to go up 9%, you're very mistaken. I'm going to say it's going to easily hit 20%. 30%. Stock market meltdown. And it, it will erase $15 trillion in household wealth. $15 trillion fucking dollars from the common man. Let that shit sink in. This isn't a fucking game. This isn't, this isn't, you know, fuck it. I'm gonna play the rest of the video. I'm gonna play the rest of the video. They raise the cash that they need to, you know, fund their daily operations. The economy will be shaken at the core. And, you know, I think the, the situation would be so, so bad and so clear that lawmakers would then have no choice but to react. But if they didn't, if they, you know, persisted and this lasted for, say, six weeks or so, then I think we would lose millions of jobs. Unemployment would go back close to double digits. Uh, the stock market would lose, you know, $15 trillion worth of value, almost a third of its value. It would be, it would be I think the word, and I used it, is cataclysmic. You paint sort of a, a doomsday scenario but you also say so far this isn't impacting you see how she smiles when they say that oh, you, you paint a doomsday scenario <laughs> it's fucking funny to them because they're rich They'll, they're always going to be rich they have the greatest financial advisors they have a fucking network behind them that's a part of this big game they have tools you you, you they have all kind of shit that we couldn't fathom having as a common man, woman, whatever the fuck you want to call yourself. We couldn't fathom having. They laugh at shit like this. So the father of three, as a homeowner, I have to be super fucking stressed out about this. I have to be the one who's going to fucking uh, go out there and get it to extreme measures. <laughs> I'm going to have to go fucking make it happen. In ways I, I never wanted to go back to. But I'm, I'm going to be that guy. I got to go make it happen. You guys don't understand what's about to fucking happen, dude. This is not a fucking joke. It's serious. I've warned you guys over and over and over and over. No, no one gives a fuck about a debt ceiling. This is America, the land of fuck a -ry. The land of fuck nuts. The land of people who want to get high and fuck all day. This is America. 
No one gives a fuck about a debt ceiling. The millennials, me, we're, we're used to debt ceilings. We're used to it. Our whole lives, it's been a debt ceiling. We're used to this incredible tab of debt that we have in America. We're used to it. Now we're going to be used to being owned and controlled by China and the digital yuan. China makes, they make no mistake that they want to be the world's currency, reserve currency. There's no bones about it. The U.S. is lagging behind on purpose. It's so fucking easy to see. Since 1971, they, they lift the goddamn debt ceiling up by billions upon billions upon billions, now trillions of dollars. And all of a sudden, we're not going to do it. All of a fucking sudden, they're not going to do it. They're crashing this thing on purpose. What are you doing to prepare? This is easy to fucking see. That's what makes it scary. They're not even hiding it anymore. We just got to catch it. Just got to catch it. They don't hide it. You just have to catch it. This hits the news stations. They're not going to repeat it for you. But you got to catch it. You got to keep your eye on the goddamn prize. Let me finish this shit. The stock market. So are we just overblowing this or why isn't the stock market reacting? Well, they've seen this movie before, right? We've been down this path a number of times. Uh, feels like, uh, you know, every few years we're uh, up against the wall here. And, uh, you know, when it's all said and done, uh, when the script is uh, finally finished, the lawmakers get it together, uh, pass a piece of legislation, uh, and increase the debt limit. So uh, the stock market is now, and investors are now inured to this process. They think that, you know, this is going to all work out in, well in the end. It's not going to feel good between now and and uh, when this happens, but uh, we'll, we'll get it done. But, you know, uh, that, that may be in itself, ironically, a problem because unless investors begin to react and respond and it shows up in stock prices and interest rates, that might, uh, lawmakers might take that as a signal that this is no big deal, no problem. We can actually default, but uh, that would be the last signal. But you say even a close call would cost the economy and taxpayers, that that, that could be bad. How so? Yeah, yeah, I, I believe it would be. Even you know, taking it down to the wire here, it depends to some degree on how it's done. I mean, if in fact the Democrats and Republicans come together somehow, pass a piece of legislation, it, at least it, we, the Republicans don't filibuster uh, the process. That they, you know, not that they have to vote for it, but they just don't uh, obstruct Democrats from voting for it. Then I think uh, no harm, no foul will be okay. It's not great, but you know, we'll move forward. But. You know, if the Democrats have to go it alone and, uh, you know, use the budget reconciliation process, a very complicated process to get this done, then I think for, for going forward, uh, you know, each party that's in power is going to be on their own here. They're not going to be able to get help from the other party. That means there's going to be more brinkmanship, more uncertainty. And I think, you know, it's going to cost us. It's going to cost us in, in the form of higher interest rates on all our on all our government debt. And, you know, that's a uh, cost to taxpayers and a uh, cost to everyone who's getting a mortgage or a car loan or a business that is getting a loan to finance their operations. Uh, it's Harry. That's right. Your favorite CNN data guy. I hope this is where we're at. J.P. Morgan Chase CEO Jamie Dimon says America's largest bank is once again preparing for a potential U.S. default, even though he expects Congress to avoid the potential catastrophic event by lifting the debt ceiling. In an interview with Reuters on Tuesday, Dimon said J.P. Morgan has begun scenario planning on how a possible debt or default would affect financial markets, capital uh, ratios, cl client contracts, and America's credit rating. That's something Diamond has indicated the bank did during previous close calls with the debt ceiling. He is quoted by saying, every single time this comes up, it gets fixed. But we should never get this close. 
I just think this whole thing is mistaken, and one day we should just have a bipartisan or uh, partisanism bill that gets rid of the debt ceiling altogether. That's what he says. That's what he says. Do you see the change? If you YouTube that video that I just played, the whole interview, he he actually says it. But on CNN, they cut it off. This is what I'm saying. This goddamn agenda. It's so fucking obvious. It's extremely obvious. Stevie Wonder sees this shit. Prepare yourselves. To the best of your abilities, the best of your knowledge, prepare yourselves. Get your money out of the bank. I know I sound fucking crazy. But in that fucking bank, it's not your money. It's not your money. That sounds crazy. And I I don't do that just normally. But in that bank, if banks start defaulting on their loans, they're going to pull from your goddamn accounts. Your money is their money in that bank. You understand what I'm saying? Like this shit is... This shit is about to be biblical, dude. And no one in America seems to give a fuck. Really, the majority seems not to give a fuck. Seems like something that they've been over before and over again and over again. It's just something that happens. Something that fucking happens. Free Britney, right? Free Britney, yeah. Free Britney. I've been hedging my money. That's for sure. It's not your keys. It's not your crypto. <laughs> oh, I've been buying all kind of shit, hedging my shit. I don't give a fuck. It is what it is. I'm going to get it. With this fourth industrial revolution, uh, this is the greatest transfer of fucking wealth. And no one, no one, no one sees it. And I mean no one as the majority. There's 1% of people that see it, and they're fucking getting in there. They're investing. 